Hi, everybody. Um, so uh, thank you so much to Elaine and to Maximiliana and for idea for um, facilitating this. Um, my name is Breed Golden. So I work in Mary Macley College in Limerick, but um, uh, what I'm talking to you about today is a project that was done through the DICE project. And I'll tell you a little bit more about, about that, uh, about who we are in DICE as well. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about a book called Curious Teachers, Critical Classrooms. Um, some of you on the call, I think, will already be familiar with the book, but um, hopefully it'll be of interest to everybody as well. So, um, so to start off with, the book was fully funded and self-published through the DICE project. Project. So I'm the editor of the book um, on behalf of DICE. Um, so who we are um, is we're a national strategic educational initiative since 2003, uh, fully funded by Irish Aid, and we're implemented in the four providers of publicly funded initial teacher education at primary level in Ireland. So I know there's a couple of people on the call from Worldwise um, who might work at post-primary level and you might work with Ubuntu um, who work at teacher education at post-primary level so we do a similar thing but at primary. So you can see the names of the four institutions there so I'm based in Limerick in Mary Immaculate College. So as a project what we do is we aim to develop and extend the staff capacity and expertise in these four par partner institutions and embed development and intercultural education as essential elements of ITE and like many of you we're working through um, the joys of naming or renaming um, or deciding what kind of language we use. So DICE stands for Development and Intercultural Education, but all of us are now using Global Citizenship Education um, because of the language being used at government level. So that's who we are in DICE and we self-published this book um, and we launched it earlier this year at the 20th celebration of our project. So DICE was 20 years old this year so you can see um, uh, the current members of the DICE project um, in the middle at the bottom um, and we, we launched the book as part of that 20, 20th celebration. Our target audience for the book because it's a self-published book and our focus is uh, teacher education. The first port of call for me was student teachers um, to have something available and useful for student teachers as they learn about global citizenship education um, on their teacher education journey. Beyond that, um, it focuses, some of the chapters on it are very specific to formal education and specifically to primary education. So hopefully also primary school teachers will uh, pick up and use the book. Um, but I would say the majority of the book is actually applicable beyond those initial two target audiences as well. So even if you don't work in formal education, even if you don't work at primary level, I think quite a lot of the book is applicable um, to GCE educators in lots of other spaces. Um, but it was written with that target audience in mind specifically um, to meet a particular gap that I perceived. So um, I'd been dreaming of this book for a really long time. Um, I was dreaming of this book, I would say, for about 10 years before it actually came to light um, because as a teacher educator, I found that there was a big gap in suitable materials that were available for my students. And some of you might have found something similar for yourself or for the people that you're working with. Um, I found that a lot of materials out there for engaging in were very academic, like very heavily academic, or maybe come from a development practice perspective and were very in-depth and very detailed, um, which my students didn't have the time or capacity to engage with an individual issue um, to the extent that, uh, that materials available did. So I was trying to uh, put together um, a resource that was accessible, easy to understand, um, explains justice topics in an accessible way without oversimplifying or downplaying the complexity involved. So I really recognize the 
the narrow fence that I'm walking along there in terms of not wanting to downplay any of the complexity, not wanting to oversimplify any um, justice issues, but yet still wanting it to be accessible, something you could sit down and easily read without um, feeling like you don't understand or you need to do a whole pile of background research in order to understand. Um, but I also wanted to ensure that it was practical, implementable, adaptable, could be picked up and used in a classroom setting. So um, the way in which I teach, so I'm a lecturer in global citizenship education, um, and the way in which I teach is I always take a two pronged approach to global citizenship education um, in that I think it's incredibly important that we focus not only on how do we practically implement this in classrooms, but also what is the background and core knowledge that each of us need. So we there are, I believe, some fundamental um, pieces of knowledge and understanding um, that each of us needs a, to understand justice and the way in which the world works before we can walk into classrooms or education settings to then try to implement it and teach it. Um, so this book is trying to combine those things together. Um, so the aims of the book, so um, because first and foremost, my target audience are student teachers, um, is I hope it can be a core text. So for anyone working with a group of students, um, that it can be used to promote global citizenship education and be a one stop shop, like Elaine said in the introduction, um, for both conceptual and practical knowledge. So you don't have to go to lots and lots of different places um, in order to get the information you need. So that's another issue that I know students have had or teachers have had is that they're overwhelmed with the hundreds of different places that you can get information from. Um, so the book is trying to bring all of that together in just one spot. Um, the second part is I really want to enable teachers. So teachers who are interested and want to uh, engage in GCE um, but are feeling overwhelmed or don't know where to start so I wanted this book to enable them to be curious about the world around them so it's not just what do I do with students but actually what do I need to know myself as a human being uh, to be critical in the approaches to education that they take and to facilitate both curiosity and criticality unapologetically and unendingly in all education spaces that they engage in so that's my goal. <laughs> Um, we're going to jump and actually look at the book itself now in a second, um, but it's really important to acknowledge that while I'm here talking to you and I uh, was the editor of the book, or this was uh, um, my baby that I <laughs> worked an awful lot on for a very long time, um, this didn't happen in isolation and this isn't only as a result of any work that I did. There's actually 24 authors involved and just a really small snapshot of them there um, in the photograph from the launch. Uh, the book has 41 chapters. Um, it grew quite a lot over the course of developing it and as authors came to me with ideas or their chapters sparked a need for something else. Um, there's also seven appendices in the book that have like some very practical um, hands-on examples and descriptions of how to do different activities. Um, there's an eight page glossary of definitions of different terminology and then a resource directory as well. So the book is divided into three different sections. Um, so section one is the what. So there are four chapters around what is GCE. Um, there are then two chapters, the section two has 13 chapters around why. So for me, why we engage in GCE is because of the reality of injustice in the world. So we have um, within that section, we have a, a dive into a number of different justice related issues. And then section three, the longest section has 24 chapters on actually how do we do this? And again, some of those are specific to primary level and formal education, but a lot of those are applicable across the board. Um, it is available for free uh, to download from uh, the DICE Project website, and I'll have that link up again at the end as well. So what I am going to do now is we're going to switch and actually look at where you can get it from. When you go onto our website on DICE, 
um, if you go to the resources tab and then under the books tab within resources, you can actually download the book. It's currently only available to download in English, but it will be available to download in Irish within the coming months. We are almost finished with the translation um, work on it. So it will be available in both Irish and English before the end of 2024. When you click download, you'll get a PDF like this. Uh, personally, I like to use, um, I like to go through it on Adobe. Um, it works slightly better than in a browser, but you can do either. Um, but what I want to do with you now is just fly down through the different um, sections of the book, what it looks like, how you can use it and things like that. So when you go in, so we have our cover in front and um, just a little bit about dice on that inside page. Um, I have an introduction for you there. The table of contents is my favorite part, right? Because the table of contents are interactive. I designed this book to be fully online and fully interactive. Um, um, I never designed it to be printed, even though a few people have got printed copies of it. Um, it's not available to buy by, in print at all um, because it was designed to be used in this way because it's fully interactive. So uh, part one that I told you about, which is the what, if I click on it in the table of contents, it brings me down to it. Um, I've got a description. So I've got chapter one is global citizenship education. In the bottom corner of every page, you've got this symbol that brings me back to that table of contents. So no matter where I am in the book, I can come back to the table of contents all the time um, to find a new chapter that I want to read. So that first part, we look at global citizenship education, an introduction to what it is. We look at some critical thinking skills anti-racism and interculturalism and action. So that's what I consider to be the core components of GCE. Um, so if I just click on the anti-racism chapter written by Neve McGurk, you get a feel for what the book is like. So these chapters at the start of the book are a little bit longer, but still not too long that they take you ages to read or engage with. Really nicely laid out in answering some key questions um, around racism and anti-racism. Um, and you'll start to see this link cell symbol. So this blue linking symbol means any of those uh, light blue words or phrases are live links that you can click on and explore more um, about different issues. Um, so if I go back up then to my table of contents in part two is the why. So why we engage in GCE to me is because of the extent of injustice and inequality in the world. Um, and I believe to be a GCE educator, you need to have a bit of understanding about this injustice and inequality. So we have um, a snapshot of some of the issues. Now, I will freely acknowledge that this is not a complete list. There is way more, um, a much longer list of, of injustice issues in in the world but this is my starting point for this book um, of some of the core issues so you can see we've got things like human rights SDGs um, looking at charity and justice framings migration sustainability climate change trade Irish travellers, a variety of different things. A lot of this was dictated by um, the way in which I teach GCE and the core issues I would um, share with students, but also within DICE, some of the people who work with us and core issues to them that they would teach about. So if I just take you to snapshot of inequality, the opening for that section gives us an overview to help people understand, like, how do we measure, how do we understand inequality in the world? What are some key terminology that we use to talk about it in the world? You'll see throughout the book, there is uh, some quotes that I like her that we like, the authors like quite a lot that we've highlighted um, for people. And then you'll start to see, we also have some embedded videos. So um, anywhere you've got a play symbol, when you click on the, the image of the video, it, it will bring you straight to YouTube to play that video to learn a little bit more. Um, so then in part three, this is our practical implementation of it. You have a really long list of different activities. A lot of the chapters in, in section three are really short, maybe a page long, uh, that explain how to do things like discussion or games or reflection. Um, early years, so it does it's some specific primary related stuff. 
Um, my favourite chapter in this section, um, I wrote with Vicky Donnelly, um, who some of you might know, uh, that takes us through some of the common teaching approaches. And I relied heavily on uh, quite a lot of the brilliant stuff already out there in the GCE world, trying to bring it together um, for educators. So some things you'll be really familiar with, like the idea of head, heart, hands, how do we frame issues? Um, uh, uh, taking a teacher stance, one of my favorite um, things for, from an e EYCI um, resource. Uh, so you've got lots of really practical um, explanations in part three. Then we've got seven appendices. As I explained, the appendices, they go through really practical uh, instructions almost for how to do some different activities. So we've got images and videos or the next one down looks at examples of how to do discussion. So uh, discussion is a core component of GCE that we use all the time. Uh, so just some practical examples. Uh, the bit that took me the longest was an eight page glossary. So if any of the terminology in the book you're not sure of or not familiar with, um, there's an imperfect and incomplete glossary at the end of it that you can check back in with. So I'm just going to switch back to my PowerPoint that hopefully that will work for all of you and you can see my PowerPoint now. Um, so as I come back to the PowerPoint, uh, We've had a really short whistle stop tour through the book, but you can see that there's quite a lot in it. Um, it's designed to be interactive, follow the links, watch the videos, but like read short bits at a time um, that you can engage with. What I would encourage you to do if you're interested in the book is start with the chapters in sections one and two and decide how the ideas within them align with or diverge from your perspective. So again, like, this is the perspective that um, like I was the editor of the book and and the authors within those sections, we all come to this with our own perspective and ideas on justice and on GCE. So uh, see if it aligns with yours, if some of it helps to build your own knowledge um, or if some of it is a little bit challenging um, or different from what you're thinking. I'd encourage you to use the chapters in section three to build ideas and plans for the classroom or whatever your teaching context is, um, adapt and apply the practical examples in the appendices. They're, they're incomplete and imperfect. They should be adapted and changed for your setting. Build your, your vocabulary. And then I have obviously got a misspelling in my own sentence about vocabulary, which is just wonderfully placed. Um, and keep clicking on those links, watch the videos, allow yourself to be taken down the rabbit holes. This is a snapshot, like all of the stuff in this book, it's incomplete. Um, and obviously there's way more context you could have um, for any of the topics within it. Uh, just uh, really briefly to tell you what happens after this book. Um, so I have recorded a podcast series um, to accompany the book. Um, so we can listen to the voices of educators that are grappling with curiosity and criticality in GCE. Um, so there are 12 episodes so far recorded and they're going to start coming out um, the week of the 9th of September. Um, and I don't fully know where you'll access them yet. So if you follow me or if you follow Dice on Twitter, we will share a link as soon as um, we figure out how, how they're going to be available. Um, so lots of the authors in the book are on that podcast series and then some other people who didn't author chapters but can help us to, to unpack the issues. Um, we're going to develop in DICE a set of supports to accompany a new primary school curriculum. So we bring the ideas in this book alive and make them more attainable for really busy teachers. Translations of the book. So we understand that translation is not just a linguistic activity, but also needs to be done for context. So there's a Guelga version that will be available soon, but I would hope to see the book translated into other languages as well and, and talking to a few people about that. And of course, another edition of the book to fill in all the gaps, all the things that I didn't get to fit into this book, um, further explanations, unpacking examples and issues that I just couldn't fit into this one. Another one will come eventually. It might take me a little while though. <laughs> um, so a huge thank you for listening. If you have any questions, more than happy. Um, to chat through, talk about them, answer them. Again, the link for the book is there. If you just go through to the Dice Project website, um, freely available to download. So thank you, everybody. <laughs>